your body and your mind are manifesting equipment. And science is ebbing ever so quickly in the direction of recognizing that we live in a participatory universe. Your body and your mind are the video game controller. Kurt, welcome to A Word to the Wise. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm doing great. I think what we're going to be talking about is a super interesting topic, and it's a topic that has become very common nowadays. So, um, but people have so many different thoughts about how to go about manifesting and the law of attraction. But before we get into all of that, I want to find out more about you. How did you become a law of attraction master? So my forced spiritual awakening took place about five years ago. It was an extremely painful process. Mm. And it's not something that you choose. So earlier in life, I chose to go down that path. This would have been in my early 20s. I embraced spiritualism. And then I kind of fell off the bandwagon and tried to do the whole matrix thing, climb the corporate ladder, the white picket fence, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And when you are selected, picked, um, cursed, <laughs> whatever word you want to pick, with a forced spiritual awakening, you have to awaken. You're not getting out of it. And it's the kind of awakening process that comes complete with the ego death. Um, another term is dark night of the soul, where it's a very visceral and very energetic ripping away of the ego because your consciousness is exploding. And if any of your viewers are curious about what I'm describing, all you have to do is look into what is ego death. And it's the kind of awakening experience that Buddha, Jesus, um, Tole, you know, those guys go through. Now, I am not even comparing myself to those three, but the mechanism is still the same. Um, the phenomenon that triggered my forced awakening is what I'm most known for. And I coach students on dealing with that and navigating those painful waters. Now, when you get to the end of this experience, you always find yourself in a place where you remember that your true nature is that you're a creator. And I mean, even the Bible said, God created man in his own image and likeness. Also, the Bible said, God is the creator. And that's who you really are at your core. You're a creator. And just in having dealt with that, and I'm a very technical person. I love science. I eat it up. I wanted to know, how does this work? Because it doesn't take you very long when you're in that kind of situation to realize that you're having a direct impact on your 3D reality. You're causing all of the weirdness around you and all of the goodness, too. I wanted to know, how does that mechanism work? And it didn't take me very long. Your body and your mind are manifesting equipment. And science is ebbing ever so quickly in the direction of recognizing that we live in a participatory universe. Your body and your mind are the video game controller, like a joystick, right, for the video game. And that's kind of where I ended up. I've always had a proclivity towards science. Um, spiritualism is something that's always been near and dear to me. I've had lots of strange experiences when I was a child, you know, being visited by angels, encountering ghosts, out of body experience, all by the age of five. <clears throat> so I know that there is this unseen, but what I'm telling your audience is it's not unseen anymore. 
Science is demonstrating that there's something there. It's a mechanism. And we're living in a participatory universe. So that's the short version of my background. Well, it's very interesting because the fact that you are very into science and also are very passionate about spirituality and your lo- and a lot of your work is in spirituality and it seems like you merge your affinity for science and your affinity for spiritualism into what you teach and how you help your students. So I want to get into all of that. But first and foremost, how would you describe the law of attraction? Well, there's kind of two sides to that. One side is the universe will match whatever you are being. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how do I get the law of attraction to work for me? Well, the truth is the law of attraction is working for you. You just don't like what you're being. And notice I did not say you don't like what you're getting. It's that you don't like what you're being. And that sounds a little terse at first, but that is how this works. The universe, which is physical and mental, just like you, right? Body, mind, soul, right? The universe is physical and mental. And then, of course, there's the unifying consciousness, the I am presence, right? The one, the one consciousness, which runs throughout said physical and mental universe. All it's doing is photocopying photocopying everything that you're being over and over and over and over again. That source, there's another word that your viewers may be familiar with, source, right? is that single point, or as they call it in science, singularity, which causes that attraction. So consciousness is fundamental, and consciousness causes manifestations in our daily lives. But consciousness, via the vehicle of our very chakras, can actually cause an attractive force that protrudes from us. So, what I'm articulating to you is the mechanism of the law of attraction. You are attracting things to you, but at the beginning of this process is putting energy out there, too. And that is exactly this mechanism. And you can see it in physics. Your mind and your body is the joystick, the video game controller. Your mind and your body are manifesting equipment. Yeah, a couple of thoughts, because that was amazing. It sounds like when you talk about singularity, source, in a religious context, could that be interpreted as God? Yes, but it depends on what part of the whole, W-H-O-L-E, you're talking about, when you're talking about it, if you're talking about it. So, like you, God, you could say, is a three-part triune being, body, mind, soul, right? So, you have the physical universe, planets, stars, space dust, Again, events around you, people, resources, and opportunities, right? You experience these weird synchronistic events or you're seeing repeating number patterns or things just seem to line up in the perfect order to cause events in your life, right? And I'm sure all of your viewers have experienced stuff like that. Well, those are physical things, but they're being coordinated somehow. So source is the intelligence. That's one of the words that I would use to describe even your soul, right? Your soul is a fractal 
um, holographic reproduction of the great I am, the one consciousness, right? There's only one. So we as individu individuals who appear as mortals to experience separateness, and right, and even like Rupert Spira or Eckhart Tolle, they refer to that as the separate self. And that's where that word kind of comes into play here. We, believe, we perceive ourselves to be in separation from God. But it's just an illusion. So we are having all of these experiences believing that they're happening to us, but it's not. There's, there's an intelligence that we came from. We are that. We are in God. It's all around us, but we are also made of the stuff of God. You talked about the fact that in order to attract what you want in the world, we are creators, we have to be. But before we get into what it means to be in order to attract, is law of attraction and manifestation, are those two different things or do they inform each other? Are they one and it's, the same? Just Yeah, pick your word. Okay, that's I mean, what I, I thought. You could, you could break it down. You could say manifesting is when the Higgs boson particle or the electron appears out of a vacuum. Or when people, resources, and opportunities appear in your life. When that thing shows up in the physical, it manifested. Right. Law of attraction is just the attractive force. That's you're putting out that attractive force. You're projecting an attractive force. Does that inform what you mean by we have to be in order to attract what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Indeed. So let's go back to your body and your mind are manifesting equipment. Your body and your mind are literally a joystick video game controller, right? Now, who's playing? My mind is usually in One the driver's level seat. Deeper. The soul, the spirit. The soul, yes. The intelligence. Remember, you are a holographic fractal reproduction of the whole. Yes. So that intelligence can manipulate the mind. This is why, you know, like subliminals are so popular with people. You know, like you put the recording on when you're going to bed or something. Um, because your, your mind, your brain is going to be more in that beta or theta state, right? Mm -hmm. When you're sleeping or mindfulness, like watching what it is you're thinking, right? This kind of thing. So law of attraction starts with the consciousness. Your soul is, at least from our perspective, as a mortal human, your higher self, your soul, your true self at the deepest level, well, at the deepest level would be the source. But going up one level from that is your soul. We still perceive that as consciousness. So that's the creative force that can just do anything at once on a whim. 80 to 90% of your manifesting game is your Zen game. And so like my law of attraction students, for example, I coach them vigorously on creating a lifestyle of Zen, dive deep into creating a spiritual practice as a way of life. And I'm talking Eckhart Tolle style, you know, something I'm signed up for his email list, something that he's been doing lately um, has been these quick little video seminars where it shows him being very, very present with making a cup of tea, for example, like living in the moment, living in the now, being in that state of no mind. So the consciousness is the fountain that everything else comes from. And so by increasing your consciousness, by embracing genuine spiritualism, right, which is pure being, just being, um, slowing down, building spaciousness into your life, right? That's energetic. 
you can't think your way there. And you don't need to because consciousness is not thought. It's not concept. It's what you are at your very core already. Once you kind of got the ball rolling, so to speak, you'll be better at noticing your own thoughts of doubt. And this probably isn't anything new under the sun for your viewers, like noticing what it is you're thinking and not identifying as the thinker. Remembering who you are, again, is primary. Remembrance is true spiritualism. You are consciousness. That's who you are at your very core. And that consciousness can reprogram the mind itself. You can choose not to listen to those old tape recordings and instead plant new ones and start believing in new ones. You can recondition the mind and start to prune away the old self. Have you heard the term that's been going around TikTok now? It's called being delulu or being delusional. Basically, sort of the way I understand it is kind of like what you're explaining where you kind of pretend or assume that you are experiencing or living in a certain mm -hmm. outcome, even though that that's not the case. Like yep. you might be delusional that you already have the job that you mm -hmm. are seeking to manifest. Is that similar to what you're talking about? In terms of reprogramming. Yeah. And I mean, it, and, and it, I don't know if I would call it delusional. Um, I mean, I would pick a nicer word. I think delusional <laughs> indicates that you're at every level, you are clear that it is really happening now, mm -hmm. even though it's not. I think most of us are sane and rational enough. Now, the flip side is, you really kind of got to be that way though. Still, it really is like, I understand why you would call it delusional in a sense, <laughs> because you are trying to convince yourself that this is happening right now. That's the one, that's the first thing everybody finds out about when they learn about the law of attraction is the universe is going to match what you're being right now. Well, I feel poor, I feel broke, and I don't know how to pretend I'm not. <laughs> pretend right? I'm rich. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it's this grooming or reconditioning of your subconscious mind mm -hmm. that causes that. You can feel wealthy even if you're not yet. I, I started doing that. I even thought of little tricks to do that. But the mind, so you as the video game player, the soul, the consciousness, you have complete dominion over your mind. You don't have to live through it anymore. And that's the tale of the unconscious. People, before they embrace spiritualism, they just continue living through the thinker, the ego, believing yeah. that they are the thinker. I am the emotions and the thoughts. But now... You remembering that you are the consciousness and the thinking and the emotions are something that you can do something with. You can rework them. And so you do. And the way that, th that you do that is to compartmentalize the mind. So we're all perfectly clear about the fact that there's a conscious mind and then there is a subconscious mind. Now the subconscious mind is primarily emotional. That's mm -hmm. why you get those very visceral feelings Reaction. in your body. Yeah. Like lack and frustration and these types of things. Those are emotional experiences. But they've been hardwired, programmed into your yeah. physical body. Right? And this is why people like Joe Dispenza are so popular. Because he's showing you how to reprogram that. So you got to kind of think of your conscious mind as the gatekeeper. Right? And the subconscious mind is what's behind the gate. And so slowly through creating a new habit of continuously being in a state of reprogramming, do you do that? And you just got to be patient. And, um, you know, there's other things that you can do. Uh, Joe Dispenza's book, 
Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, it instructs you to do like a really good visceral induction style meditation where you feel all the different parts of your body and then you flood it with consciousness, set an intention, and then surrender to God, which is brilliant because if anybody can pull it off, God will. And it works. I started doing this a few years ago, and it's interesting how I've changed. So what I am being has changed. My personality has changed, but it came through experiences. So I would be brought people, resources, and opportunities to reprogram my subconscious. Like I started having different experiences in life. And then what I believe or what I am being changes. And you can even do that with something like money or relationships or any of that. So you're essentially manifesting the conditions that cause what you're being to change. And then given time, you feel abundant. And you could be sitting in the same house that you've always been living in with the same stuff and the same credit card bills piling up or whatever it is, right? But you feel abundant. And that's when it starts to get really exciting because you get excited. You feel gratitude for the things that you already have. That's when things start shifting your direction. So that's kind of a quick condensed breakdown of maybe that process, if you will. But again, pivotal is the function of the mind. There's the conscious and the subconscious. And what the universe is matching is your subconscious, which again is how you feel. Okay. So and we're manifesting from our subconscious mind. From our subconscious mind. Okay. So one thing I've heard is that in order for you to call in or attract what you're looking for, you have to be fully healed. But I've also heard people say you actually don't need to be healed. There are no sets of conditions that you have to meet on a self-evolution trajectory for you to be able to call in what you're looking for. Like you said, you just have to shift your state of consciousness and get into what that thing would feel like if you were to have it. You don't have to be fully self-actualized to actually get mm -hmm. the things you're looking for. Is right. that correct? Yeah, well, because fully healed would be like Jesus. It'd be like <laughs> Christ consciousness, you know? And so something, you know, healing is a dicey word. Um, and it's something I talk a lot about um, with my students, for example, or on my YouTube channel. Um, healing is fine, but healing the ego does not cause self-actualization. Self-actualization causes healing of the ego, though. And ancillary to that is the fact that you're always going to have emotions. So I think people have this perception that healing means I'm never going to feel a negative emotion ever again. And that's impossible. Jesus wept. Jesus got mad one time and went in and like flipped a bunch of tables over in the temple and chased a bunch of dudes around with a whip. That's like the one story out of the New Testament that Christians are like, oh, well, yeah, there was that one time, <laughs> right? No, he did that. He got pissed. So there's always going to be challenges in your life. To me, healed is when you have accepted the mortal position that you find yourself in, when you've accepted that life is always going to be bringing you challenges and you have the tools now to deal with that. Um, getting angry is not a bad thing, but why are you doing that? And that's where you're getting into a conversation about, well, is this healed or not? Because if somebody scams you, you're going to get mad, right? If somebody rips you off, if somebody pushes you on the street for no reason. You know, I've had coaching students who came to me and they said, yeah, this guy physically attacked me in the subway and I got mad and I yelled at him. And then when I got home, I started shaming myself because that's not spiritual. And I said, no, 
that is 100% spiritual, hon. You're not not spiritual because you got mad. Spiritual is consciousness, nothing else. Um, so you're accepting the fact that you're living in this world of duality and that you will always experience emotions. But it is that acceptance that makes you spiritual. And acceptance does not mean approve. It means you look at something and you go, it just is. So... Further to your question, well, I manifested abundance starting about five years ago, mm. right? I mean, I own a business. I have three employees. I have thousands of coaching students. I'm doing okay. But I still have that doubt. Like, whoa, what if the party is over tomorrow? What if something happens? Now, what I do to deal with that is remember who you are. I am not that which doubts. Ah, I am not the mind. What's the name of the first chapter of Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now? It's called You Are Not Your Mind. And the longer that I've been doing this, the faster that seems to help. I just don't worry like I used to about things. And yeah. there is the mortal aspect. You are a mortal person. I have kind of gotten used to this. So now I'm getting to the point where I just don't really worry about it like I used to. You know, sometimes when I think about all of these different concepts, I'm like, wouldn't it just be easier to not take life so seriously? <laughs> I feel like yeah. that speeds up the process. If you don't, it take, does. If you don't take yourself yes. seriously, you just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do, not in like a way of harming other people, but I'm going to go for that thing that I want to go for. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe that I'm worthy just because I'm existing. Yes. And well, it just seems that that's an easy way of just living. Yes. And doing those things, going for that thing you want is the product of the being. And I mean the pure mm -hmm. being. When you go for those things, that's what you would call, what am I being? which is the mind, you're reprogramming the mind, the mind can be this or that. But the pure being, that's the joy. Yes. That you, you, you just do that anyway. You know, Abraham Hicks calls it pure positive energy. You are unlimited. That is your mm. true nature. This was a great, great discussion, Kurt. I love how you- I had a lot of fun in. doing it. I yeah, had the one. best time just weaving in the- scientific concepts with the spiritual aspect of it, which is cool and something that I try to bridge the gap because we like to look at sciences over here and spirituality is over here and religion mm -hmm. is over here and mental health mm -hmm. is over here. But there's like a, a, a line that kind of goes through all of them. And if you really listen, we're all kind of saying the same thing, but in yes. different ways. And we have different ways of explaining the very same concepts. So I True. really love how you blended everything together. I really appreciate your wisdom and uh, you being on the show with us today. But I have to ask you for final words of wisdom to the listeners. It could be about what we've been talking about or something completely different that you kind of keep in your back pocket as you go through life. Mm -hmm. You are unlimited. You are a tiny little piece of the whole. The great I am is unlimited. Yes. Thank you, Kurt, for joining me on the show today. My pleasure. Good talk. <laughs>